rejected takeoff, RTO. For the same reasons as expressed above, for example, auto brake rate of deceleration combined with the effects of reverse thrust, full reverse thrust on all operating engines must be used during an RTO. This application of full reverse thrust may remain until the aircraft comes to a complete stop. Equally the auto brake max function should be left engaged up to the same point or, if unavailable, maximum manual braking must be used. By this use of all available means to decelerate the aircraft remember also speed brake provides lift dump and places the weight on the wheels to improve braking efficiency you will make sure the aircraft will stop in the shortest possible distance and time. Regarding this point, it is highly important to remember that there are several factors or errors that might affect the decision to reject a takeoff and hence would affect ASDA. Some of them are Factors involved in decision making Inappropriate aircraft status at dispatch the brake worn or not working properly. Residual brake temperature for takeoff. Errors in flight preparation. Error in aircraft tow determination load sheet. Error in takeoff data calculation V1, VR, V2, flex temperature. The runway friction coefficient is lower than expected. Efficiency of a decision affected by. Inadequate or incomplete pre-flight briefing. Too long to recognize unexpected conditions. Misunderstanding of cues associated to the failure. Limited time decision. No adherence to standard call-out policy. Bad crew coordination. De-icing and anti-icing. Judging by the number of aircraft that have been written off attempting to get airborne with some degree of contamination on them, it should be clear that this subject is not universally understood. An in-depth study is strongly recommended. References can be found in the Flight Operations Manual, Part A, Chapter 8, FCOM, de-icing document produced by the Ops Engineering, and various Airbus publications such as the Getting to Grips, Airbus publications. Ice, on the wings or any other part of the airframe will cause an increase in drag and an increase in weight. Both of these are undesirable and will degrade aircraft performance by an unquantifiable amount. Worse still are the changes to the aerodynamic properties on which the aircraft relies for predictable and controllable handling. The angle of attack at which CL max is achieved as well as its value is both significantly reduced by a contaminated aerofoil. It no longer possesses the profile its designer intended. This means that the angle of attack at which the stall occurs may be reached prior to the angle of attack at which the stall warning devices are activated and that the ability of the wing to lift a given weight is compromised. Changes to the handling may include a rapid pitch up during rotation or severe roll once airborne. There is no guarantee that sufficient control authority will be available to counter these and loss of control may ensue. Note that flying an approach without control problems due to wing icing is no guarantee that the wings are clean. High values of CL are required during the go-around, hence attempting this maneuver subsequently may result in difficulties. Make sure the wing is clean and keep it clean is simple but sound advice. Managing delays. Technical delays. The resolution of technical problems may be a simple matter, such as changing navigation or landing light bulb. This is not something to delay passenger boarding or with which to trouble the cabin crew, quite simply it has no relevance to the cabin or its occupants. When more major surgery is required or may reasonably be anticipated and some delay is thus likely, then due consideration needs to be given to delaying passenger boarding or disembarkation and of course to informing both cabin crew and ground staff as to the situation. Cabin crew frequently shows an interest in technical problems and many, particularly the junior crew members, are very concerned about safety aspects. A few well-chosen words will help remove any anxiety they may have and thus should ensure that they are more positive, and also perhaps less emotive when dealing with queries from passengers. Cabin crew are on board to ensure the safety and to enhance the comfort of our passengers. They need to know when to prepare the cabin, including the all-important catering, in advance of passenger embarkation or departure. The cabin service needs to be kept informed of developments and given a reasonable estimate of the time to complete the engineering work, in order to prepare the cabin. Alternatively, should passengers remain aboard during the delay it may prove thoughtful to carry out some form of refreshment service. Do remember that trolleys are prohibited from the aisles on the ground as they would impede an evacuation. Extra catering may need to be uplifted. Whether passengers remain on board or not can be something of a dilemma. Many passengers are unhappy watching engineers, working on an aircraft in which they intend to fly, particularly when engine cowlings, inspection panels, etc., are opened or removed. Others may complain after a lengthy period of being locked up in the aircraft. 
Comfort levels are almost always better in the departure lounge as are the available facilities, telephones, toilets, refreshment facilities, news agents, TV, etc. In particular, if the onboard air conditioning is unusable or otherwise unable to cope with ambient conditions, then if the delay is other than brief, the passengers will be in a more comfortable and less stressful environment back in the terminal. In that case, you will not have the problems of extra catering, the demand for information relayed via the cabin crew, air conditioning requirements, and requests for mobile phones to be used or messages to be passed. Incredibly the downside of returning passengers to the terminal is that they disappear. There is a tendency for them to wander off, decide not to travel but tell no one, or just ignore boarding announcements. This in turn can lead to further delays whilst discrepancies are resolved or the bags of missing passengers are located and removed from the aircraft. A further difficulty can arise if you are not on a stand adjacent to the terminal building transport. Airside transport, coaches usually, at most airports is a slow and generally inflexible way to move passengers. The logistics of removing a hundred or more passengers from the aircraft to the terminal and back from a remote stand makes this a task not to be undertaken lightly. Advice must be taken initially from engineers as to the expected length of delay once the initial diagnosis is complete. This advice must then be combined with the big picture already formed by information from the ground staff regarding airport facilities, transportation, etc. in order to find the proper solution for the situation. One thing is sure, in case of a lengthy delay there is no other option but to return the passengers to the terminal. Air traffic control delays. These broadly fall into two categories. Known delays where an approved departure time or calculated takeoff time is issued before boarding is due to commence. Advised delays are where you are advised either during the boarding of passengers or when startup is called for. Known delays. It is policy to board according to your scheduled departure if an ADT is issued. In the meantime advise ATC that you are fully ready once boarding has finished in order to be able to accept improvements regarding your ADT. This policy is not universally successful but does have a significant success rate that easily justifies its continued use. The policy does enable the acceptance of a very short notice of a new ADT for example, can you be airborne in the next 10 minutes? From ATC, which otherwise you could not accept. Advise delays. Except when caused by a catastrophic computer failure at the ATC or by extensive bad weather, the delays are usually known and are usually of short duration, say less than 15 minutes, often related to transient congestion at the departure airfield or on a particular route. At busy airfields awareness that other inbound company aircraft may need your stand can be confirmed with ground staff. An early pushback or possibly the acceptance of a remote hold will help your colleagues and exceptionally may help you to get airborne quicker. In the event of an advised delay, the cabin service as well as the engineer in charge of the pushback should be informed in order to allow them to plan their respective duties. Local ground staff should also be kept informed either directly if still in attendance or otherwise by radio transmission. A quick word to your passengers will always be appreciated in situations like this as well. It shows you are in control of the situation while trying to improve it at the same time. Never leave your passengers in the dark. They count on you for a reliable update on the situation. Communication of delays to passengers. In all cases of delay a PA should be made by the captain explaining the reasons for the delay. It should not be too technical or too long, keep it short and simple. Any delay is an entirely negative experience for any passenger as for them it has no good side at all. In order then to ameliorate the impact of this disruption on our customers the PA should be positive. It should be optimistic as well as mentioning the measures that you, the engineers, ground staff, air traffic control, or whoever is taking to expedite matters. Be positive at all times. Final, do remember, when managing any delay, that your priorities are to minimize the extent of the delay wherever possible to minimize the disruption to our passengers, and to ensure that they remain as comfortable as possible throughout the whole ordeal.